last question. I mean, um, we're very close to we know the the date of the date of the open, and we're very close to unveiling where. But we do know the dates of the final of, the, of this year's Freakish Challenge, and it's going to be yeah. the beginning the beginning of February. You were here for for last year's final. Actually, it's it's it feels like last century's final because it was pre-COVID. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it was this February. What did what did you think about the competition, the format, and how? Maybe is there a different way of uh, experiencing and living the sport here in Southern Europe? Well, first of all, we wrote this. So the two years ago when we, when I went uh, by myself, you know, I wrote this. It was just like this. What you have to take a look at here is there's a couple things. Which is, this is where the CrossFit Games needs to learn something, or maybe other competitions needs to learn something. This event was built to serve two things simultaneously and does it very well. Number one, to get to get fans involved. That is number one. It serves that purpose immediately. And the second thing is built for entertainment. Entertainment. Not every comp, every competition, most every competition that's out there is built to service the athletes and the competitors competing on the floor, not the fans in the stands, not the people watching on live stream. And you have an eight hour long competition, some throwdown here with a $2,000 prize purse, People aren't really tuning into the live stream unless they know somebody who's competing there. They probably know them personally. And so that's why they only have 2,000 people watching the live stream. Now, why do you guys have a couple hundred thousand people watching the live stream? Because you've built an event that's meant to entertain people. It's mm -hmm. not it's not neglecting what's going on on the competition floor, but it's involving the crowd and exciting them in a way that allows them to be entertained. You look at a UFC fight, and you're like, you don't watch UFC for eight hours mm -hmm. of people you've never heard of before. Like of you know competitors, you might watch eight hours of title fights over the course of the day. You wouldn't do that regularly. So when I look at your guys' event, I'm like, guys, like this is entertaining. It's short enough to be consumed. This, the the method for completion is understood ahead of time, and the the user can follow that. The the, the consumer can follow it. So I I love what you guys are doing for that very reason because you are fundamentally building something that can move beyond the competition floor. If a, if a competition event is built mm -hmm. just for the competitors, it can only grow as many competitors as you can accommodate on the floor. It doesn't put people in the stands, you know, and you involve the biggest names in the sport. And that's, and that's really, that's really the kicker mm -hmm. uh, is doing that. Now I can tell you the one thing I would love to see more of, and I know the fans would love to see more of is those pros actually doing real throwdowns, like to yeah. doing some stuff that did get people excited you know, one versus one or two versus two, you know, even a, like a two versus two or a men versus women in a team competition or even mixing it up and doing some pairs. I think that would be super exciting and fun because they just people, you know, they just they're never going to get a chance to be that close to the action. They're so close. I mean, you're literally like 35 feet away from Matt Frazier or Sarah Sigma's daughter, you know, at your worst seat, 50 feet away. You know, and you're right there and you get to see it. It's just live, exciting environment. And man, uh, but that's the one thing I would do. I'd be like, hey, guys, you're going to have to sweat this year. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's not going to be in the CrossFit Games, but you're going to have to sweat this year. And sorry, but the fans are going to love it. And you're going to love it, too. And they I mean, they they would go wild. So the last two years, yeah. you know, we the first year they worked out a little bit more than I was there. Last year they worked out a little bit less. And I was like, yeah. Let's make them sweat. They're not doing yeah. anything this week. Come on, you know. Yeah, and, I, and I'm t and I'm telling you, every year they come and they, they and they want to do it. They're really excited, and you know they're always willing to to, just to, to, to have a good time. Yeah, Snatch yeah. And, mean, let's let's you know. Oh, they're all heavier right now. They're in the off season. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll get them to do it at, at some point. But you know, but thank you so much for them. Yeah. The kind words. Thank you so much for the enthusiasm for what, for what you guys do at the morning chalk up and and um you know it's 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 something that it's great for the sport and I'm I know you'll be doing much better stuff in the future so we're sending you tons of energy so, from from Barcelona I'll talk to I'll talk to John and and Flores right away and uh, yeah. thank you so much as well for the for the conversation it's been it's been a pleasure amazing it's been awesome spending time with you thanks so much thank you Justin you take care. <laughs>